You know, when I look in the mirror, I look at everything about my body and I think more so my legs. Right now, even just looking in the mirror, this is very wide. And it's wide, but you know, it's okay. I have to think it's fine. Like everyone's got, everyone's legs are wider when they sit down and big and whatnot. But yeah, it's, I focus on that. On a bad day, it's, you know, or a bad week. It'll be every day I just like, oh, oh God, wow, I look awful. I sort of try and keep it to myself. I never really show anyone it because I'm so ashamed of feeling this way. It's really hard. Like even just sitting next to you now, it's like, you're beautiful and tiny and, and then I feel like a little elephant next to you. That's how it sort of makes me feel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. Um, I mean, what's, like, what is the impact of all of that on you? It's tiring, really tiring. Um, I sort of wish that I didn't have it, so I could just live a normal life with friends and just enjoy life itself. Sorry. <laughs> Something like this that consumes my mind so much is so difficult. It's just constantly there. Like, honestly, I just hate what I see. Like, I just can't stand it. <laughs> researchers in Australia are trying to understand the different aspects of body image disorders. Professor Susan Russell and her team at Swinburne University are investigating something called body dysmorphic disorder, where you obsess over a physical flaw that other people can't see. Imagine you have a pimple on your nose, okay? okay. <laughs> and uh, you're a teenager and you have this pimple on your nose and um, every time you walk past a reflective surface, the pimple just seems to become bigger to you and you can become more and more focused on it and you might spend longer and longer looking at it than you would normally look in the mirror. That's what it's like for people yeah. with BDD. They just become over visually focused on the part of their body. So what we've been using to, um, to study this scientifically is a technology referred to as eye tracking technology. And it's basically a camera that just monitors what your eyes are doing. They're using this technique to try and understand if people with BDD look at faces and bodies differently to the way that most of us do. An infrared camera tracks my eye movements while I look at different faces, including my own. I'm supposed to be guessing their emotions. Sad, happy, angry, disgusted. What I can see today from you running this exercise is a really nice, typical, healthy pattern of looking at people's faces. What healthy people tend to do is firstly look across our eyes and then down to our mouth. And the reason we do that is our eyes and the mouth are very revealing in terms of the muscle movements and in terms of expression. This is a BDD pattern. So you can see that this is very different from the triangle pattern that healthy people show. And it doesn't matter what kind of image we put, bring up or what kind of tracking, it's always very random. So why are their eyes going all over the place? They like don't that? like looking at the salient features and it's almost they don't know that looking at the salient features it will enable them to give a quick and reliable answer. Um, and they, they do this with all the kinds of images that they look at. It's not just faces. They don't pick up on the important features to actually give them information about how to make a decision. So why are people with body dysmorphic disorder like that? We think they might be genetically predisposed to have an overactive visual system, which then is triggered by environmental um, reactions to things. What it means for them is they develop their symptoms of BDD, which include their, their, their symptom of disgust for a particular body part. And the other thing that seems to happen with our people with BDD is they become very socially anxious because they know that they do this when they go out there in the environment. They find things very confusing. A lot of the people that we see become very socially isolated because yeah. um, they don't want to go out and they don't want to experience this stressful environment. And they also then, because of their beliefs about their body, don't want people looking at them. Daniela has never been formally diagnosed with body dysmorphic disorder. 
so she's agreed to come to Professor Russell's lab to be tested. So for this task, you'll be shown a series of faces, different pictures of human bodies. As well as tracking the way Daniela's eyes move as she looks at faces and bodies, including her own, they measure the levels of activity in her brain as she tries to identify and match faces that show the same emotion. OK, Daniela, we're all finished. We're coming to get you out. Cool, thank you. This test is designed to reveal whether Daniela has a distorted perception of facial expressions, a key sign that she might have BDD. And the results confirm her suspicions. What we're looking at here is the side profile of your brain. Compared to a healthy person, you are seeing a lot more activity here in the back of the brain, in the mm -hmm. visual cortex. Um, and then in the front of the brain, or the prefrontal cortex, we're seeing quite a lot of overactivity, which we wouldn't see in a healthy control when they're, when they're performing this task. Mm -hmm. So you would be showing a fairly typical pattern to a person with body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What's it like for you to see these patterns show up? Um, it, yeah, interesting. I honestly felt like maybe I'm like I don't have it. I don't like I don't have BDD. I don't have this. I'm you know I'm a normal person. I see things normally in the mirror. I mean everyone must you know have a fixation on something. I'm I can't be that not normal. But uh, seeing this, it's, really, it's a bit hard for me to process. But I guess you know we'll get somewhere from this. Yeah, it's validating it's, your ex experience, yeah. isn't it? Like others with BDD, Daniela's brain goes into overdrive when she tries to read facial expressions, something that most of us can do easily. And her eye tracking results are the final confirmation. She looks at faces and bodies with a classic BDD pattern. I feel like having these results now is almost reconfirming the fact that I don't exactly see what other people see. I guess the good news is that these guys are developing some therapies that can help with stuff like this. Yeah, that's really exciting. Like, everyone can get some help and hopefully if this therapy works then we can all work together and, you know, living a happier life. That's pretty emotional. <laughs>